All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to actually back up your Synology NAS to another offsite Synology NAS using Hyper Backup. So if you follow the three, two, one backup rule, you need to have at least one offsite backup. This means something could happen to your entire first site and you would not lose any data because it's all being backed up to another site. And Synology makes this incredibly easy. So right now I've got my two Synologies, Todd and Tank. And so I'm gonna be backing up tank to Todd. All right, and so our first step is to actually go in to the Synology that we'd like to be backing up to. And we're gonna go into Package Center and install Hyper Backup Vault. So we're just gonna click Install. All right, so once it's installed, go ahead and open it. And you're gonna see that there are no targets so far. Nobody's backing up to it, which makes sense. But now that that is installed, we can back up to it. And so now we're going to go back into the NAS that's actually being backed up. And if you've not installed Hyper Backup already, go into Package Center and install it, but I've already got it here. And it's super easy. All you have to do is press plus, new data backup, and we're going to choose remote NAS device. So Synology's made this incredibly easy to do. Just hit this drop down menu for the IP address and it's going to search your network for other Synologies. And it found it. So when we're doing this internally of the network for the first backup, we're gonna leave encryption off. Then just enter an admin username and password for the Synology you're backing up to. and choose your shared folder. And it is just that easy. So now choose which ones you would like to back up. For this, we're gonna go ahead and just do a very small file so I can show it and hit next. And then you can also back up any other applications you would like to back up here. And now we set up how often we would like it to run. We'll call it offsite backup. And you can choose a bunch of different options here, including client-side encryption, which I would recommend doing. Select it and add in a password. Now remember, if you lose this password, your backup is totally useless. So make sure you know this password and honestly write it down somewhere. Remember, it's unlikely that somebody's going to find it and also be able to unlock your drives but it totally depends on your security needs. And you can also select when to run and how often to do an integrity check. Make sure to have an integrity check because that basically makes sure that your data is able to be backed up. Nothing is worse than a backup that you can't restore from. And here it's just going to remind us to keep in mind that if you lose the encryption key, you're toast. And then I'd recommend setting up backup rotations and do a smart recycle. Basically it keeps more data points from the most recent backups and fewer data points from previous backups. That way you don't have a ton of backups from 20 years ago, but only a few backups from this year. So it helps use your data more efficiently and just hit apply. And I do go over the different options within hyper backup a lot more in my other video that I'll throw in the link in the description. And so it's just gonna say backup now. And so we're going to want to execute our first backup now, yes. And so while it's backing up, we can go back into Hyper Backup Vault on the remote NAS and check it out here. And we can actually see how long it's taking to run and everything like that. And it makes it really easy to check on things. This is great, say you had a business with a bunch of different NASs across different offices you could back them all up to one centralized server. All right, and so now that first backup is finally done, this could take hours or even in some cases days, even locally, if you've got a ton of data to back up. So it's really good doing it locally rather than remotely the first time. So now we just need to get the secondary NAS ready to be remotely deployed. And so what we're gonna wanna do with this secondary NAS is we're going to want to set it up so we can get back to it remotely. So we're going to go in there and we are going to set up through control panel, external access, 
create a DGNS name for this NAS. I've got more information on how to do this in my video that I'll link in the description below. But what this is going to do is it's going to give you an address such as todd.synology.me and basically your Synology is going to constantly update that address to be the IP address of whatever network it is on. That means if you don't have a static IP address in this remote location, it will always be updated and so Hyper Backup can always find the remote NAS. So go ahead and create that. And then the second thing you're going to have to do once you get to this remote location is you're going to need to port forward whatever port you're using for Hyper Backup and that's on this screen here. Whatever this port is right here you're going to need to make sure that that gets forwarded to the remote NAS from the router. That way, Hyper Backup knows where to go. So then once you do those two things and you've deployed that remote NAS, we can edit the IP address and we also are going to want to change transport encryption to on. Then you're going to change that server IP address and just like that, it will be able to start doing that offsite backup for you automatically. It's super easy to do. So one thing to note, if your main NAS dies and you need to use this backup, it's probably just gonna be easier for you to bring the drives back to the main location than try to restore from a remote location. But other than that, that should be all you need to know. Go ahead and leave any tutorials you want me to make in the description below and have a good one, bye.